and it is going to the final one uh, so that uh, our athletes also can have prize. Despite the fact that we have also prize money from World Athletics, uh, at least Kenya will also offer some additional prizes for the winners. We are going to have different categories, the 10 kilometers men and women, and then we have the under 20, 8 kilometers, 6 kilometers. We have also under 18, 6 kilometers, 5 kilometers, and also kids athletics. Kids, kids athletics also is the department that is coming up now with uh, partnership with World Athletics and also the Ministry of Sports uh, uh, and also and, and, and at this Kenya to develop an interest when the athletes are young. So those are the areas that we are looking into. And finally, uh, on Saturday, we are going to have also veterans. And the veterans that were selected are those who have done very well during the cross country series during those days so that they can parade and we show the world that our athletes, retired artists are also there and we recognize the contribution they have given to this country. Now, um, at the end of the day, I've been looking at the World Athletics regulations. And uh, one of the things that I saw at the National Cross Country Championships two weeks ago was the course at Lobo Village. First of all, you know, how was it designed and measured by Ibrahim Hussein? Keep him boy. Uh, Ibra is the director of ADC in uh, in Africa, which is uh, a wing of uh, World Athletics, and he's also certified to make sure that the, the courses that we use are ratified by World, Athlet World Athletics. Uh, the course is not designed only by uh, our officials in Kenya. There is uh, a, a program or um, you know the the, the way a, a course is designed, and it def it, it defines differently. The, how that course should be done. And normally what the uh, World Athletics wants is um, a different way of doing things. You have to have a course that is challenging and, and different and it also encourages uh, spectators, it's entertaining, it's sometimes some areas are easy, some areas are difficult. So it is, it is a unique way of uh, making the course very interesting. There are some areas that we looked at it and might could be dangerous for the athletes, we remove that, but it has to be challenging as required by World Athletics. So it's not at least Kenya that actually decide. We use the formula given by uh, the World Athletics, and of course the person who is doing that is Ibrahim Hussein to certify that goes that it is safe and uh, secure for our athletes to run on. Uh, let me start with the, because having seen that course at the Nationals, let me talk about the first part. Um, after you do the start, it tends to be a downhill, and you've got I mean, there is a hill that was mm -hmm. uh, created and compacted. Then the athletes go around the bends, and they're supposed to be a water spray in the original plan. Just talk about that first half of the course. Um, we, I came back this morning from Melbourne. I was there yesterday mm -hmm. looking at the course. We have also people from uh, World Athletics and also from Europe who are helping us also to design, working with Ibrahim and this technical team. The first as by the regulations from World Athletics is that we have to have at least a minimum of 100 meters as a start. So we, we are changing a little bit so that uh, there's no commotion with the athletes when they are starting mm -hmm. because they have to run very fast so that they can get the line. Immediately after the 100 meters now, you run a few meters and then you have to go through a small hill, which is a bit difficult. But when you start, it's easier as you progress and the mileage increases also it becomes also difficult so that is another challenge and then uh, immediately after that that also is some some curves and then corners and then there is um before uh, i think two kilometers there is also hay where they have to jump because mm -hmm. last time they didn't have it instead of putting the logs we are going to put hay on top of that so that they can jump but the most interesting area which it was not there last time is that if you watched uh, chingue mulini uh, in Italy last yes. weekend, mm -hmm. uh, athletes run through uh, the mill, so they have to run upstairs through the the stairs and then they come down also, uh, even though they are using the spikes. But this one now, uh, the design is that we are going to have a very big tent where the athletes will run through. We will have people also sitting there and, and taking tea, drinking, and then the music is also inside there. <laughs> and after that also, we are thinking we were also thinking of putting a spray. Uh, but we are still thinking about that depending on whether the weather is good. If it is hot, then we put a spray. But the most interesting one is they are going to run through the tent, a big tent, where people will be singing and then the musician is there. And then you progress all the way uh, before you, you reach the, st the starting point again. There is now where the, the, most, the, the, the more treacherous part is where you had water and mud. 
that is where now they are this more interesting you find most of these uh, reporters sitting there and watching the way they run so that's where we are going to have uh, the most difficult point what was the reaction because i saw some under 18 athletes uh the girls were doing the five kilometers and the boys were doing the 6km some of them lost their shoes in the mud pit what has been done you know to change it such that i mean like you mentioned there is safety you know, <laughs> as long as there are no nothing that can uh, can affect or injure the athlete uh, under the, under the the mud, there's no problem. That is why it is called cross country. It involves so many things. I used to run also cross country, and one time also I ran in uh, Kambacho cross country, where they had they had mud and everything, and we lost the shoes everywhere, and we were not even able to remove our sh uh, our clothes because it was cold and and it was the most difficult course uh, we have ever had. So, this is this is not a problem. The, the gross country is supposed to be that way. As long as the, um, it is not injuring the athlete, it has, to be, it has to be like that. But when it comes now, the kids' athletics, which we are going to have, and under 18, we will have them not to run through that course because they are young. We have already designed in a way that they are going to run two kilometers, but they are not going to go through that mud. But anybody under, under 20 and uh, seniors, they must go through that. Wow, that's interesting. I think that's a lesson learned from the National Cross Country Championships. The other thing that uh, World Athletics says is that you may have this discretionary event. That's the under-20, the under-18s, the veterans and the kids. But the entries must be limited to 1,000 for all of them. How are you working around this? Uh, our additional numbers will not exceed 1,000. So we want to make sure that uh, in any event it is average of uh, 90 by event category let us say the 10,000 meters men uh, because it involves international athletes we have at least uh, an average of 90 for both men and women and then the, the, the under 20 under 18 then we have about 60 to 70 so it will not cause any commotion the total number of athletes that we might have is going to be 500 so it's not going to be more than a thousand but then we have different ideas also as proposed by world athletics the discretion like that we are asking is for us now even to have the, the federans if we have the federans we prefer this time to match we have 18 chosen uh, athletes retired athletes that will be matching just to show and then maybe in the future now we can, we'll have competition for the veterans that will also spice up the event who are some of these athletics masters that you know you've invited you can let the cut out on the back uh we have people like um uh, we have john gubi uh we have uh edith masai those we have already invited uh we have kipawen we have benjamin limo and many others who will be attending that. So we have about uh, 18 of them that have already been selected and they'll be there. The other thing is now when it comes to the financial requirements, <coughs> um, number one, first of all, the accommodation of the elite athletes. It has been um, set out in the tour regulations by World Athletics, How you, especially for the elite athletes. That one has already been done. That's why I'm telling you that I was there in Eldoret yesterday. Mm -hmm. We have a team that are working on that the the hotel that will be staying in eka hotel which is a four-star hotel and then we have boma also the elite athletes will be staying in boma and then they invited um, um officials or the dignitaries that will be there will be staying in uh, some of one of those uh, top, uh, top places top places <laughs> so i think uh, when it comes to accommodation that is done deal everything is okay we want to make sure that whatever we do is da done in advance so that uh, we don't have any issues uh, travel and accommodation, uh, transportation. We have already set up everything in place so that when our athletes arrive in Nairobi, uh, the, the, the invited athletes they just be uh, they connect the flight from Nairobi to Eldoret. Those who might come when there are no flights, and then we have an accommodation, a layover at the airport, so that they can wait for the next flight normally in the evening. So everything has been set for their stay and also for our local athletes also we have booked hotels for them in Eldoret so they don't have issues we have their transportation and uh, of course uh, even the media is, is also invited to go there oh. now the other thing that we've got to talk about is there is a standard um, that has been set athletes budget at the world athletics cross-country to a gold meeting and let me just read this directly from the regulations a minimum total athlete budget for travel accommodation and prize money should be fifteen thousand. the prize money shall be paid within 60 days of receipt of the doping control clearance from uh, the athletics integrity unit and uh, also the athletics integrity unit i know will also be here to check the course integrity isn't it 
because um, it expanded that. Yeah, you is always here. <laughs> they are here, they are with us. So that's not an issue even because they are already here. Mm -hmm. When it comes now to the, the payment of the, the prices, uh, we stick to the rules and regulations governing that. We will wait until, because uh, they'll be, the athletes will be tested, so we wait until the results come out uh, from AIU and they should give us the green light to pay. Because the government has already s uh, given us the money, we don't have a problem. Uh, like on Nendel Tour, uh, immediately the AIU gives us the green light, the artists are paid automatically because everything has already been said. So we don't have an issue with that. The problem sometimes is when the money is not there, but the government has already given us the money for the price money for the athletes, so that one is not an issue. We are going to do that, and we are really grateful of the government for the support they have given us once the money is there, and we are just going to pay the athletes immediately. The green light is given to AK to pay the athletes. Then there is something else that I would like to mention, Rao, that <coughs> the Athletics Integrity Unit has been doing, and many people at times have forgotten, is that... Um, outside of doping, which is what they are known for, is now when it comes to looking at simple technical regulations, how are you adapting to this? Because we saw them you know, raise uh, that issue when it came to entries for the Olympics. Um, you know, we have uh, what we call Rule 15, and that Rule 15 governs countries that are still on, on the watch list. Kenya is among the five countries that are on watch list. And the, and the rules and uh, regulations governing that, we have to stick to that. Actually, uh, let me just interrupt you. If you're taking a look at the videos now, that is the mud pit. It's five meters long, and athletes will have to navigate that at the cross country. So if you just take a look at it, that's a mud pit that only the under-18s will not run through. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> they to run through that. But uh, the mud bit will be there, but then, of course, the water will not be there. Aha. Good. So back to AIU, and I'm, and I'm not talking about just the doping part. That is well understood. It's about the integrity of course lengths, uh, equipment, and technical operations. We, we operate under the guidelines of World well Athletics. So it's a rule book that we have to use. Whenever we are there, we read the book and we follow those rules and regulations mm -hmm. governing that. Anything that is international, an event that is organized by World Athletics like the cross country, we stick to the rules, we cannot defeat because when you break the rules, then it also affects the federation. So we, we have no problem because even the, the, the course you are talking about has already been certified and is acceptable. Mm -hmm. the, the distance when you are starting the event the, is measured according to the rule book that is given. The distance that uh, the athletes have to run before now joining the, the main event is the minimum is 100 meters, so we stick to that. So we are going to stick to every rule that is given and protect also the integrity of the event as by the regulations from World Athletics. Tell us now about the prize money structure of this. Uh, the, prize man, the prize money structure has already been posted to the website so that the athletes can see what they are going to do. And I cannot tell you exactly what it is, but the money is uh, substantial. Of course, that is now the prize money from uh, Athletes Kenya. But we have now the prize money from all athletes that will be for those who have won the the series so that one now will also be, depend on the world athletics how might they are going they, i mean when they are going to pay them but we'll give the other ones no, now to tabulate the the persons who have won and then they can send the money directly to them or to the managers next now let us talk about the entries and the criteria <coughs> used to select um as required by world athletics for the senior men and the senior women that's the first those ones uh, we use the rankings and you know also we have to negotiate with the athletes some of them they don't want to run because they have they have prior engagements like they have to go to run indoor or any other event mm -hmm. so we, ne we engage with them and those top athletes now the foreign athletes we have to provide uh, the transportation and depends on the performance of an athlete so we also see what they are asking because sometimes they ask for uh, appearance fee we call the appearance fee those who will come and run for the prize money are different those we engage from outside the country is through uh, appearance and also accommodation so it depends it's not the same it's different from one athlete to the other according to their performance we have a structure for those athletes who won medals in uh, during the olympics we also see them differently. They are given uh, different uh, payment according to their performance during the Olympics. And uh, the structures, uh, called silver and bronze, 
their earnings is different. And then we come now to uh, the athletes also that have done well before. As per the rankings, we take up our top 20 in the world rankings and we see how we are going to pay them. So it is different, but according to the rules and regulations given by World Athletics, we stick to that. But of course, it depends on the performance and the rankings of an athlete, uh, how much they earn. Well, talking about the prize money, let me just read out what the World Cross Country Tour overall prize money is. World Athletics is offering $37,500 for the men and the women. The overall winner gets $10,000. Uh, that's about 1.13 million shillings. That's overall for the men and also for the women. And it goes down 8000 for second, 6000 for third, 5000 and uh, uh, 4,500 and 4,000 up to those who are ranked sixth. So <clears throat> overall, this is the uh, 14. That's where we're going to get the ranking point for that. Now let's now take a look at some of the athletes invited. First of all, the women's field. Margaret Chilimo of Kenya. Uh, let us in bed. Gide, Winfred Yavi, Kenyan born Bahraini. You've got Yulia Shmatenko of the Ukraine and Senbere Teferi of Ethiopia. Looking at <clears throat> just some of those names from the elite are uh, eight that are uh, eight or nine that have been invited. What kind of competition do you expect? When we have uh, Kide and Margaret Chilimo and Chiruto and Yavi, that's a tough competition. Most of those took part during the uh, Olympic Games. So uh, Kide is a uh, world record holder in 5,000, a uh, marathon, and the 10K. So th you can see now the kind of uh, athletes that we have. Uh, uh, we are going to have a very strong athletes. And of course, we, we cannot also forget uh, the athletes that have not been listed there, and they are from Kenya, and they are very, very, very good. So we are going to have a very strong um, competition. And remember also, we picked athletes uh, that did very well during the National Cross Country Championship. And also we considered at least that might not have competed during the World Cross Country, I mean the National Cross Country Championship, and we included them also. So it is going to be uh, a National Cross Country Championship plus those elite athletes that have been invited. Uh, Barnab Kurir, he is a mem an executive committee member of the uh, Athletics Kenya and on Saturday hosting the Agnes Tirop Classic. It's a World Cross Country Tour Gold event. We'll be coming to the men's field and what it's like to have Jeffrey Kamoror back after we saw him running in uh, Valencia. That was late in, this, uh, in December where he finished fourth. We continue with our conversation on Sports Check and it is about the Agnes Tirop Cross Country Classic, a World Athletics to, uh, to a gold event that's going to be taking place at the Lobo village in Capseret, was in Gishu County. That is just outside of Eldoret as you move towards the Eldoret airport. We've heard about the elite women. Let's talk about the elite men. And this is the marquee event, uh, the closing event. Uh, Jeffrey Kamuaro of Kenya, Joel Ayeko. We've got Albert Rop, uh, Rans for Bahrain, Samuel Fitui of Germany. Plus, we saw at the National Cross Country Championships that um, the names can be forgotten. Nicolas Kimeli has been out there at the tour. And when he came in, he said, actually, things are a little bit different here. There is no respect for names. We, what kind of competition would you expect from the men's field? Yes, um, of course, uh, every national competition where it involves uh, the veterans, the elite, and the newcomers. They always um, uh, give a run for the money for those uh, top athletes. Camoro is going to be there. We have also Kimeli. Uh, we have um, very young athletes that competed uh, recently during the World Under 20. Most of them are ready to compete. You saw what happened during the national uh, championship, during the KDF competitions, uh, national police service. Uh, you name it. Uh, Kenya is uh, well endowed with uh, athletes. We have deep talent of uh, our athletes and uh, anything can happen so you cannot be sure that so and so is going to win but we expect also uh, the young ones who are hungry to win uh, uh, the game especially having this event as uh, an international uh, category event so we will expect uh, the young athletes uh, to do very well especially those whom we train, whom we prepare during World Under 20, and we eventually won the World Under 20. And as we prepare now for the uh, to defend the that the third series of uh, 
uh, wall and at winning championship in Cali, our athletes are ready to, to conquer the wall and to fight for the slots during uh, this cross country event. Now, let's move on to something. Uh, there's a question that has come in here, and I think it would be good <coughs> that it is answered. We've been asked um, normally when we've got this event, there is uh, the thought of hold them in the capital. Why the choice of Eldoret? Yes, uh, first of all, you realize that uh, during uh, the last three years, we have transformed athletics. The, the president has decided that we have to visit practically every region who has the potential to have an athlete. So we have gone to most of our regions in, uh, in search of uh, new talent. Uh, when it comes to competition, you, you can see also our um, weekend meetings, the program. It is diverse. We don't go to one particular area. We have in Kisumu on the 19, and then from there maybe to Eldoret, uh, Nakuru, and then maybe Embo, so that we give opportunity to the, the athletes from the local areas to, to compete. When it comes now to international events like uh, cross country, we have had national championship in Nairobi. We also have uh, permit meetings when we used to compete here in Nairobi here. Uh, but then we realize that also the majority of spectators uh, come from uh, uh, Lorette area, uh, Kapsabet, Iten, and the surrounding areas, Kericho. So when we had the, 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 the trials for the Olympics in 2016, if you were in Eldoret, you could have seen the turnout was completely amazing. We had the stadium was completely full. Uh, there was a spillover of almost equally the same number of spectators outside. They were not able to go in. Uh, so we thought the president of Atlas Kenya thought maybe the best way is to have this event in Eldoret where majority of these artists come from and give them opportunity also. So next time it might not be in Eldoret, it's going to be a different place also to encourage not only where majority of the others come, but we encourage also other regions to come up with the support and their local governments also we are inquiring, or I mean we are insisting that they should come on board and support athletics. So this is very important and we discussed the same thing with the World Athletics, our president, talked with the, uh, the leadership of World Athletics and when they talked about Eldoret, they were very excited also because when it comes to any competition, it is the turnout, it is the spectators that counts most. We want more people like over the weekend, the majority of the stadium was filled by the, by the athletes, but we didn't see spectators there. It was mainly the athletes, but a huge number of athletes. But then we should also get equally huge numbers of spectators to encourage our athletes. Because if we have the top athletes and we expect so much from them during the competitions, during the World Championship, during the Olympics, but then we don't even go and encourage them, it does not be as well for us. We need to be there to encourage them, to cheer them, so that they can feel that they are really appreciated in the country. The other one that I would like to talk about is the management of the crowd and what are the protocols for anyone who would like to attend that event? Um, because nobody would like a repeat of what happened in 2019 <laughs> in, uh, at the Eldoret Sports Club. Um, what is happening is uh, whatever we are going to do, is uh, because of COVID-19. We still have problems with COVID-19. We are going to stick to the measures that is given by the government. That's why we have uh, COVID protocols that will be followed. The security, we have already informed the security from Mosingishu. They are also going to seek support from surrounding areas. And I'm sure also the national, because of the, the red alert that was given, uh, the national uh, security apparatus also will be uh, informed of what is going to be because uh, it's going to be a big event. So I don't think this is going to be any issue. The security will be uh, done and the, the venue will be completely secured. But then we are urging the people also to make sure that they are free to come. Uh, we'll uh, apply uh, protocols and uh, we have every section where the athletes, where the VIP will be sitting, <coughs> is, going to, to, is going to be secure. <coughs> so it should not be any worry because the, the security apparatus has already been informed of the event and they are going to be there in full swing. Uh, at times there have been restrictions as to the number of people who can attend. What is the target number of spectators you're looking at? Uh, what I'm saying is that um, we are going to uh, expect uh, the large numbers. We encourage them to come. There's no restrictions at all. We have not been given any restriction from the government. But since the, the, uh, the COVID has gone down a little bit, we have to be sure 
that they follow still those regulations and put on the masks and we'll guide them on what to do. But they should come in line numbers, but we'll guide them on what best to do. Now, let's come to this emotional part of this event. And we are talking about the name Agnes Tirop. And having this meeting, ideally it would have had another name, but what the activity that you're going to do in the memory of the late Agnes Jebet Tirop, 2015 World Cross Country Champion? We were given this event before the, the tragic uh, death of uh, Agnes Tirop. And we had already assigned the name to that, to the event. Uh, before that. But then the leadership of uh, Osingishu and Nandi requested that uh, in memory of Agnes Hero, we should also see what we could do. Our president sat with the executive members and <coughs> other leaders and they discussed and they came up and said, okay, because of what happened and the tragic uh, way of her death and the fact that the whole world was concerned about, uh, they decided now to in in her memory and other things that we are still going to do let us use her name so that uh, we, we remember her for the work she has done for the, the the work she has done for this country the contribution she has made and uh, supported especially in athletics being the one of the youngest persons to win in the uh, in the China. actually so, she was the second youngest after Zola Bad. yes i i, I forgot about Zola Bad. <laughs> was Zola Bad was controversial you remember <laughs> yeah, that, uh, we, i mean yeah. the whole story the of south africa and all yes. that so i think um, that was something that we had to think and because of that and in honor uh, of our memory uh, that's what we decided and it was being supported by the, the minister of sports too now there is something that i mean we would like to uh, i would like to put out you know in relation to this is athletics kenya rather than hold an annual conference at one place you went around the regions speaking to athletes differently and from the information that you collected and you were able to you know sift through and come up with how is it going to change the entire athletics ecosystem in Kenya? Um, the, it has to change. Uh, immediately after she lost her life, uh, we were all shocked. The whole world was shocked. And of course, the uh, general uh, decided that instead of going to one place, Eldoret or Nairobi, bringing in athletes from different parts, it was a better idea to go to where they are so that they are freely, they can converse, they can discuss, they can also tell us exactly what ails the, the industry. So we, they came up with that uh, idea and we went around, as you saw it. We collected all the information, there's some information that was very, very sensitive, and uh, that report is still being worked on, and it is going to change how we see athletics and how we do. But first of all, because the CS, our CS had already appointed a committee to look into the same problems, not from athletics alone, but from other federations, and we had that uh, uh, seminar in Mombasa. So we are also going to share the same information on how to see how we can uh, uh, we implement it and uh, disseminate it to the public. All right. So you've heard it from Barnaba Korea. Oh, just a quick one. How much? What's the entry fee? Uh, it's free. It's free. <laughs> it's free. It's free. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> it's just free. Come in. All right. Come now. On. I have a reason to go to Eldoret, not as a journalist, but as a fan. And so long as I don't get caught, you know, running inside the truck, so you know, trying uh, it, because it will be deemed that I am pacing an athlete at the cross country event. Thank you very much for telling us about the Agnes Jabetti Rob Cross Country Classic. It's in our memory, taking place at the Lobo Village, and this is this Saturday. It's a World Athletics to a gold event when it comes to cross country. So there's lots of action that you can expect on Saturday. The best of the world in cross country will be here as the cross country season for world athletics comes to a close. Thank you very much.